Good afternoon. Good to be with you in God's house. What a beautiful day. And how wonderful to be with you in God's house, worshiping our great and gracious God. Our service for today, we are getting closer and closer to Easter and Holy Week. Yeah, we'll be here before we know it. Just, just uh, We've got this week and next week for midweek Wednesday services, and then we'll be at Holy Week, which we'll talk more about. But uh, our service for today, as we've been looking at promised treasures, and especially things that are tangible, that we can see and hold, and uh, some things taste. Uh, we're going to look at palms today, and we pray the Lord's blessing upon our service today. But before we begin, would you do me a favor, just rise where you're at, turn around and say hello, and God's peace. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. And God's peace up there. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Our opening hymn for today is Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. You can follow along in the hymnal for 423 or up on the screen as it is projected. May God bless our worship today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. Lord Jesus, search our hearts and minds that we may receive your word, share in your spirit, and be renewed in our relationships with you and with one another. With humble hearts, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, the Father's only Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, hear us as we pray. 
You call us to celebrate your victory over death and the grave. But often we resign ourselves to defeat and refuse to give you our praise. Our rebellion against you in thought, word, and action is why you die for us, to forgive our sins, to redeem our lives, and to cancel the debt we owe God with hearts that are humble and lives ever grateful. Help us to receive your grace, bow before you in worship, and confess that you alone are Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, shows his mercy to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord, blesses us with new birth in the water and the spirit, and assures us that our lives belong to him. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, palms lifted high, were waved in the air to celebrate your triumph. As those who know you as King and Savior, help us to be altogether joyful because of your victory over our foes. Renew our hearts and minds during this Lenten season as we receive the promised treasures of your word. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the Lamb, 547, the Lamb.
Our Old Testament reading for today is from Deuteronomy chapter 16, beginning with the 13th verse. And again, our readings are projected on the screen for you if you'd like to follow along. You shall keep the feast of booths seven days when you have gathered in the produce from your threshing floor and your wine press. You shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless and the widow who are within your towns. For seven days you shall keep the feast to the Lord your God at the place that the Lord will choose because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you will be altogether joyful. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our responsive psalm for today is Psalm 92, selected verses for today. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 7, beginning with the ninth verse. And here, John, the apostle on the island of Patmos, gives us a picture of our heavenly home through faith in Jesus. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation and from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and cried out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise at this time for the reading of our gospel for today. Our holy gospel is according to St. John. The seventh chapter began with the 28th verse. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, you know me and you know where I come from, but I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true and him you do not know. I know him for I come from him and he sent me. 
So they were seeking to arrest Jesus, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. Yet many of the people believed in him. They said, when the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. He will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me, and you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and I invite Miss Page to come forward as she has our message today for our children. So I have a question. How many of you go camping? It's a pretty good amount. And you know, growing up, I would always go camping too with my family. We'd go to this little, little state park off in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. And I would absolutely love it because it was so small. The whole campground was one just little oval. So of course, I would always ask my parents, to bring my bike, and I'd go in circles for hours, seeing how fast I can go, seeing how close I can cut the corners, having so much fun. But of course, that wasn't just all of my camping trip. It was also spending time with family, getting to meet new people, making friends, but it was also about just being out in nature and being out in the beautiful scenery that God has given us. But that camping trip was for fun and enjoyment. I'm assuming all of your guys' camping trips was for fun and enjoyment too, right? Nobody gets forced to go camping. You might not like it, but it's supposed to be a fun and eventful time for you and your family or whoever you go with. But in our Old Testament lesson today, it talked about making tents. And back then, after Moses had saved the people of Israel, he would have all of the men go back to Jerusalem and make tents. If we could go to the next slide, that's kind of a picture looking about what they would do. They would make these tents or these canopies and celebrate something called the Feast of the Tabernacle or the Feast of Booths. And Moses had them do this to remind them that without God, they wouldn't be here because they would still be in Egypt and they would still be enslaved. But Moses, they would, every year, 
They would go and camp like that for a week. You think you could camp like that for a week? You might, you might struggle a little bit. But it reminded them to be thankful for everything they have because they got through the 40 days in the desert, they crossed the Red Sea, and eventually they made it to the Promised Land. And so I'm not asking you to take a week and go spend it out making a tent just like they used to. But always remember that God gives you everything that you have. Whether it's the clothes that you're wearing, the food that you ate for lunch, maybe it's your friends that you hang out with. God provides you with everything that you need. And in thanks, that's kind of why we use palm branches as a symbol of thanksgiving and praise and honor to God. And so we use that because without him, without Jesus, we wouldn't have anything. You do me a favor and pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving everything that we need. And thank you for sending your son to die for us on the cross and give us an everlasting home in heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Miss Page. We continue with our hymn, which is right on, right on in majesty, 441 we sing. 441. <laughs> God's grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you today from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text for today's messages, our message is from our readings for today, especially our Old Testament as well as the epistle for today, the second reading. Please join with me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray that you ever be with us this day as we come to your house to hear your word and ever be assured of the life and hope and care and salvation that you alone bring. I pray, O oh Lord, be with us this day. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may it ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, have you ever won something before? How many? Raise your hand if you've won something before, okay? All right, you can put your hands down. If you go on to the next slide for me, please. 
if you won. Now, and just to forewarn, I may come down from the pulpit today, so just for the person who's doing the uh, video for today, so that you know. If you look up there, you see some different things that you might have won, and those were symbols of your winning, or victory sometimes that we call. Anybody recognize some of those things up there? Or a couple of things you see. Yeah. A trophy. Anybody ever won a trophy before? Yeah. Good for you. Excellent. Anything else you see? What are some other things that are symbols of victory up there or winning? What do you see, sir? Ribbon. Anybody had a ribbon before? Could be from many different things. It could be a different color, too different colors that you have. Anything else you see up there? Where are some other symbols of victory that you see? I've been over here. Let's go on this side. Oh, what's another symbol? A medal. Anybody won a medal before? You guys won a medal before? Pretty good. Yeah, I see trophies, medals. I even look like a ribbon. I've even seen belts before. If you're into wrestling or whatever it may be, you got a belt, championship, um, medal going around. Um, anybody know what that 213 is about up there? What's that 213? Anybody know what that is? First, second, and third, and they might be standing up there. Anybody ever been standing on something like that? Yeah? You won something? Isn't that pretty cool? Isn't that wonderful to have victory and to know about it? Well, let's go on to the next one. Some other symbols of victory. Okay, well, some of them may be more familiar to you. Sometimes we see this as peace sign, but it also is victory. V for victory sign also that you see that it's there and sometimes we'll see people doing that um on there after a team Kansas City won the yeah what did they put on their heads and they put their hats on and I imagine they had to have them for both sides right just in case but the one who wins they put the hat on Sometimes it's a t-shirt that goes with it. All sorts of different victory signs. And then down below, sometimes there's these things. And from what I understand, my team from Minnesota has not won any of those things. Thank you for making sure and making that well known there. What is that up there? What do you see down there? Yeah. Rings. Yeah. Yeah. Rings. Symbols of victory. Isn't it pretty cool to know you've won? Victory. Now, you have to admit, like Kansas City won the Super Bowl, and they call them the world champions. Now, for how long will they be the world champions? Yeah. For one year. Until, unless they win again. They, but they've won four times, haven't they? Yeah. How many times again have the Vikings won? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that type of thing going on. Yeah. Good for them. So for this year, they are victorious. Those are symbols of victory. Let me show you a number symbol of victory. This is a symbol of victory. Did you know that? It's a symbol of victory. When you see this, what do you think of? What comes to your mind? You're doing my fake out thing. I like that. What do you think of? Yeah. What's that? I still can't hear. A leaf. You think of a leaf. It does have leaves, doesn't it? And pretty cool leaves when you think about it. Give me more. What do you think of when you think of this? Yes, ma'am. A palm tree branch. Now, when you think of palm tree branches, what do you think of as well? What are some other things that come to mind? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Yeah. Kind of neat, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, and, you show, and Ms. Page showed that. The bill, did you notice? It was, may have been hard to see with the lights, but it was with palm branches, wasn't it? Symbol of victory, yeah. I can think of some other places. What else do you see? Palms, what? Palm Sunday, what's that about? When Jesus came into Jerusalem, right? You're right, you're right. Came into Jerusalem, and we sometimes speak of that as his victorious or triumphal entrance, right? Now, if you look around in the church, you're going to see some palms, and I want to show you a couple of them, okay? The first one I want to show you 
is right over there. If you look at Jesus, you see him in Gethsemane praying, and that's the night of his betrayal. But underneath, you're going to see some palms. And I don't know if you see that. I see a palm in the middle underneath there. I see two other symbols there with it. What are, what's one of the other two symbols you see? Yeah, a crown. When you think of a crown, what do you think of? What do you think of? Like a king, yeah. And then there's another one. What's the other symbol that is there that you see? Yes, ma'am. You see a cross. Did you know all three of those are symbols of victory along with this? And so when we think of Jesus, Jesus came. He came for who? He came for us and for all people, didn't he? He came to us because we could not come to him. And when he came in on a donkey on Palm Sunday, they hailed him, which means they cheered for him. They worshiped him. They hailed him as their king. And they said words like Hosanna, which means save us now. And hail the son of God, to glory to God in the highest. And they looked to him as their king. Now let me ask you this. What kind of king comes on a donkey? What kind of king comes on a donkey? Yeah. Jesus. I like how you said that. I had one person over here shake their head. A king doesn't come in on a donkey. A king comes in on what? A horse with an army, with swords, with all sorts of things. And he doesn't. He comes humbly. A donkey is a symbol of humility. It's a symbol of bearing a burden. And that's exactly what Jesus is going to do. He comes humbly because he's come to do something special that we could not do. What has he come to do? You know? Yes, sir. Quinn here. He came to die for us because that was the only way that our sin could be taken away. It took a perfect death, and Jesus was the only one who foot that bill, being God and man. And he goes to the cross and pays for it once and for all. Over here, you're going to see a couple more symbols. Oh, by the way, let's go back here for a moment. On the far side, they're not, I'm not going to go into those. Those are all branches. But these three over here, to the left of that cross with the crown and with the palm branch, is something. What do you see right there? There's Easter lilies. Yeah. A baptismal font. I want you to remember the victory. The victory is ours through Jesus Christ. Now, if we went back to when we had, uh, can you go back just one more? Can you go back one more slide, please? All right. Anybody have hats? They, they tell me uh, a team by the name from Green Bay won a victory before. Anybody have hats? So something like that. Anybody have shirts that say championship? You know what? When they win the victory, do they say, when the team wins the victory and the fans, do they say, they won? Or do they say, we won. we won? What do they say? We won. Now, those of you who cheered for Green Bay, were any of you out on that field fighting or in that game at the time? Absolutely not. So why do you win? What have you won? Yeah. You consider yourself part of the team, don't you? And because your team wins, we believe we won too. Did you go to the cross? Did I go to the cross? Who went to the cross for us? Jesus did. And he did it out of love, didn't he? Amazing love. And now the victory is given to us through faith. Given in your baptism or strengthened, over to the right of that is the word of God, uh, is the, the Lord's Supper through the Lord's Supper. Those are ways in which God gives us that forgiveness and strengthens us in that victory in faith and hope through his death and resurrection. Over here you will see 
Palms again, symbol of victory. And then you'll see two tablets with two stones with numbers on it. What do you think that is? What's that? The Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments, as we look at those, we know we haven't kept them, have we? In fact, we know that of ourselves, we would have no victory. But Jesus comes even for that, too, to fulfill them. And he reminds us he's given it to us out of love. To the right of that, of the middle there, is a book. Anybody know what that book is, do you think? The Bible is the place that tells us about that, isn't it? In fact, that is German that it says there. We'll see if we got some German people who remember a little bit. It says Heilige Schrift. Anybody know what Heilige Schrift means? Anybody know? What does it mean? You think you know? Oh, you are really good. Holy Bible or holy writings, very good, where God tells us the message of his victory that he won through his cross and empty tomb. And it points us to Jesus in that victory. And the life and light and the Holy Spirit works through it as you see the dove coming down. And then in the middle, I'll end with this one here. What do you see in the middle there? I see palms again. Some symbol of victory, but what else do you see? A cross and an anchor. What is an anchor used for? Anybody know what an anchor is used for? Yeah. Ships, very good. They're used for ships. And what do you do with them with ships? Maybe you like to fish. Maybe you're, on a, maybe you're going on a, a cruise. They have anchors. Why do they use them? To stop the ship. Why do they have to use an anchor to stop the ship? Why? To keep you something. Why? Why, why do you need an anchor in, on a ship? Yeah. The brakes don't work. I like that. That is true. The brakes do not work. Because you don't have brakes. You can't work in water, right? Very good. So it... What were you going to say? It anchors it to the ground. So we have a cross, an anchor, and the symbol of victory. Let me ask you, who is your anchor? Who is your anchor in life? Oh, I like how you said that. Jesus is our anchor in life. Now let me ask you this. Has anybody been on a boat in water before? Now let me ask you this, have you ever been in, out in the water when it's been really rough and you were nervous? Did you pray? I can remember when I was in the water, it was rough and I wasn't sure we were going to make it. Do you think I prayed? I was 17 years old. I prayed really hard in a canoe. The waves were three, four feet high. And my brother was about 24, 25, and he couldn't swim. And we weren't sure we were going to make it. Do you ever feel that way in life? You ever wonder if you're going to make it? You ever been through some pretty rough waters in life? Maybe you're going through them now. Who's your anchor in life? Yeah, and he comes to us through his word. He tells us of the victory that Jesus won through his life, his death, and the resurrection. The people of old, God's people, when they were in those tents, they remembered what God did, how he provided for them, how he rescued them, how they turned away from him and rejected him, and he still saved them and preserved them. But you know what? They always look forward to going home. Let me read you something from Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 says this. As I said before, this is a picture of heaven. And John, who's the only disciple who did not die from being killed or persecuted, he's given a picture of our heavenly home, and here's what it looks like. 
After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, symbol of victory. Salvation belongs to our God. In other words, the victory is the Lord's. But it's ours too through Jesus, isn't it? Who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, Jesus being the Lamb of God. It goes on to say this. Then one of the elders asked me, who are these in white robes? And who are they and where have they come from? And I answered, being John, said, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who come out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, there are people who are clothed with Jesus' holiness, righteousness. Anybody know when that happened for you? Anybody know when God clothed you with his righteousness? Say it really loud for me, would you? Baptism. Oh, your baptism. Yes. He clothed you with the righteousness of Christ. And he goes on to say this. As he applied what Jesus won through shedding of his blood. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them and never again will they be hungry. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And then I want to share with you just one more portion of scripture. And this is all because of Jesus' death and resurrection. And it says this. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory is yours and mine through Jesus. May you know that in good times, in bad times, the Lord who's with you, who has saved you, who's given you victory, and may you share that good news with everyone that may well, know, they may know his victory too. And this we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we sing our operatory hymn. I ask as you're able, we rise as we sing on my heart, imprint your image, and the offerings are brought forward at this time. The majority of our prayers are projected on the screen. We pray to our great and gracious God. Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the blessing us with the opportunity to consider again the cross of Christ and receive your promised treasures. Grant that the message of the Lamb of God, slain for our salvation, bring us the riches of your pardon and peace. Lead us to see that our sins caused Jesus great agony in the garden that our sins nailed him to the cross of Calvary, that he was forsaken by his Father so that we might never be forsaken, and that he died so that we may live. Lord Jesus Christ, grant that especially during this sacred season, the treasured story of your wondrous love for us would draw us closer to you. 
Inspire us by the palm-waving pilgrims who sang your praises as you entered Jerusalem. Enter our lives that we may have victory in you amid the pain and adversity of this world. Holy Spirit, lift up troubled souls everywhere. Grant wholeness to those hurting in heart, body, and mind. Work your healing power in the lives of those in need. Especially, O oh Lord, we remember Jacob Bloom, Tom Grams, Phoenix Park, Gary Rose, Rock Fredette, Rusty Knutson, Sean, Son, Seth Schultz, Cindy Burbridge, Vinnie, Vienna Lee, Larry Craker, Mary Bushweiler, Merlin Meyer, Ken Rosensky, Pastor John Sugatan, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them your care and strength to bear their crosses, and that they might know the victory and the life down eternal that is for us and our loved ones through faith in Jesus Christ. And we pray for all in the lives of in, in the lives of all we name before you in our hearts. All glory, honor, praise be to you, with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May be seated as we sing, Hail Thou Once Despised Jesus, 531. The Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, 443. good being with each of you today. The Lord's richest blessings upon your week, and the Lord be with you and with his peace.